Hi, everyone. I am Stephen Hevern. I am a senior technical account manager at AWS, and I am based out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Uh, welcome to AWS Supports You, where AWS support experts provide tips to optimize performance in the cloud, lower costs, and provide you with best practices and design considerations. Joining me today is Raj from AWS Report. Raj, can you give us a quick introduction? Thanks, Steve. Um, hello, my name is Raj, and I'm a principal TAM based out of New York. Been with AWS for about uh, six years now, and uh, I specialize on machine learning, data analytics, and operational excellence. Great. Thanks, Raj. Today, we'll be introducing you to Amazon SageMaker Studio Lab. We will specifically focus on being able to learn and get started with machine learning. For those of us joining uh, today, stick around. We'll be sharing a referral code for priority access to Amazon SageMaker Studio Lab in the chat. Keep an eye out uh, for that during the presentation. Uh, before we get into the details, a quick note to the attendees online. Feel free to use the chat window on the right-hand side of your screen to let us know where, you're, where you'll be joining us from today and share your thoughts and questions uh, throughout the episode. Uh, we look forward to hearing from you. We'll also provide a link to our survey. So if you'd like to let us know how we did, please click on that link and leave your feedback. Uh, finally, uh, in the chat, we'll have a poll. Please take a moment to answer that uh, survey. Thanks. Raj, can you take us through what we're going to be talking about today? Yep. Sure thing, Steve. So um, today, we're going to talk about SageMaker Studio Lab. Um, we all have heard about uh, SageMaker in general. So what is SageMaker Studio Lab? We'll get to that. Uh, the objective of today's session um, is to facilitate um, all the ML enthusiasts, uh, people in the academic side, and uh, whoever is interested to uh, learn about ML, to provide them a platform that they can use to experiment and learn ML, right? So the theme or the core theme today is uh, uh, how you can quickly learn and experiment with uh, ML. Uh, that could be uh, ranging from carrying out some uh, model building exercises, exploring your data, uh, or probably um, identifying some opportunities or use cases that you can work on machine learning and so on. Because we all know that uh, machine learning is uh, on priority list for most of the organizations today, um, either from a predictive nature perspective or from a improvisation perspective and so on. So ML it has, has become a core concept in terms of any discussions. And um, we wanted to make sure that uh, everyone is aware of some of the tools that are available today and also some opportunities, uh, how you can uh, get started with the machine learning. So if you are looking for, um, any assistance or any help in terms of, uh, hey, can I get an environment where I can start experimenting with machine learning? Uh, today is the session uh, for you. And uh, the cool thing about this is that um, this is going to be completely free of cost. Uh, so we're going to make sure that you are provided with uh, an environment that you can use to experiment and learn machine learning without going through any hassles of signups or probably uh, getting an integration going. So no hassles of signups or integration. It is just going to be a standalone platform. We'll walk through how you can get there. But if you're looking for getting started with machine learning, today the session is for you. Great. So how um, have we positioned um, the session today? Uh, we'll go for about uh, 50 minutes or so, uh, five zero. And uh, initially, we'll talk about what is the state of machine learning as of today. Uh, what are some of the things or considerations for machine learning? And uh, where does uh, SageMaker Studio Labs uh, come into the equation? Uh, how does uh, Studio Lab addresses uh, some of the uh, key asks from uh, people of different uh, stages, different personas, um, like say academic side, or maybe uh, from the testing side, or um, anyone who wants to learn about machine learning. So how does Studio Labs uh, help them? And then we'll also have a session where we will focus on uh, questions um, to see if there are any specific questions that you have. We'll take breaks in between the session to see um, if you have any questions. Um, and then we'll cover a brief demonstration. So between the uh, session and demonstration, 
we will share a referral code as steve mentioned earlier uh, the uh, referral code is going to help you to get priority access uh, we'll share the link to uh, sagemaker studio lab anyone can sign in for sagemaker studio lab and you will be put on a wait list so what the referral code is going to uh, help you is that it's going to give you priority access to SageMaker Studio Labs. You will quickly get onboarded to SageMaker Studio Labs. You will get a sign-in link, which you can use to sign up and uh, then um, log in to Studio Labs and then get started. So um, one note is that uh, if you are joining in for the session live, um, you would be you'll be given the referral code and please uh, sign up or use the referral code um, in the next uh, 50 minutes or so, uh, because the referral codes will expire at 3 p.m. Eastern today. Uh, this is just a, a security uh, requirement. Like we do not want um, unauthorized people to make use of the referral code and uh, uh, cause any issues um, in terms of spinning up large number of environments, et cetera. We want the referral code to go to people who are joining in um, to the session and who really want to get started with machine learning. So. We will share the code, um, I think, halfway through the pre presentation. Sign up. It is just going to take a few steps, like your username, um, uh, like your first name, uh, last name, and so on, and uh, provide the referral code, and then that will uh, help you get started. You you don't have to um, use the uh, SageMaker Studio Labs account now because you're going to um, have time to use it later, but just the sign up alone, the request account piece alone, make sure that um, you do it in the next uh, 50 minutes. As soon as we share the referral code, uh, please make use of them. And then at the end, we'll also share some resources that you can use for uh, later reference. And then finally, we'll wrap up with a Q&A session. Great. So our vision, um, our intent is to democratize machine learning, make machine learning and data science accessible to all customers. That's our intent. And uh, by all customers, we mean learners, developers, data scientists. We all know that we are in a, in a, in a time where uh, the predictive aspect has become uh, so critical um, in uh, businesses of different sizes, uh, businesses in different industries. The predictive nature has become uh, so critical or crucial um, in any business. So from that perspective, uh, we believe that uh, machine learning is uh, definitely uh, going to play a key role um, in terms of facilitating businesses. So from that perspective, our intent is to democratize machine learning and make machine learning accessible uh, to all businesses, to all customers of ours. And uh, just a key note in terms of what is the status as of today. This is all uh, building up to where SageMaker Studio Labs comes into the equation. Um, some of the uh, key metrics that we wanted to highlight is that uh, Quant Hub estimates that there's a skill gap of like uh, 250,000 jobs that are yet to be filled. And uh, on uh, uh, the other side, Open data science jobs on LinkedIn is about um, 122K. That is as of number 2021. And I'm pretty sure that as of today, it is only um, increasing. And on the uh, other perspective, in terms of productionalization, we see that about 13% of uh, the DSML project, the data science and machine learning projects, make into production per venture beat. Now, to put all of this into the equation, we see that there is definitely a gap in terms of uh, skills that is available today in the market. And um, everyone is uh, trying to uh, make some progress in terms of machine learning. And they're able to make some initial progress. And then finally, <clears throat> the machine learning projects may or may not make into production. So there is definitely a gap in terms of um, how do we uh, make sure that machine learning is accessible, machine learning is available, and it is easy to use or people to get started with uh, machine learning in terms of uh, whatever requirements that are available uh, today in terms of building up a model, in terms of making predictions, and so on. So with that context, how do people learn about data science today? Option one, 
Um, you have these massive online courses uh, that you can take. Option two is that you could uh, go through universities and uh, you could uh, get a particular uh, education on a particular topic that could be data science or machine learning. Um, and some people use blog posts to develop their skills on uh, machine learning uh, towards data science is one of our favorites. Uh, GitHub, because it's a, a massive community in terms of uh, repositories and uh, code that you can use. Um, that could be like building a model, training a model, um, and so on. And uh, some people do it uh, with on-the-job training, um, and there are organizations that conduct hackathon um, where uh, they wanted to facilitate uh, the experience or expertise in machine learning or even get started with machine learning in some cases. And then last but not least, uh, Jupyter ID is the uh, development environment that we use uh, typically when you uh, work on any machine learning project. So that is where, uh, that, that's your one-stop shop uh, for you to get started, uh, write code, execute the code, see the results. That's, that's, that's the uh, uh, interface, if you will, in terms of any machine learning project. So these are some of the um, attributes or some of the venues um, that people uh, take uh, from universities to blog posts to using GitHubs. Maybe one or two, or some people might use all, but uh, these are some of the available uh, venues where you can uh, get started with machine learning and data science. What do customers want? Um, we try to categorize the personas uh, like you might be on the academic side. Um, when if you say academics, uh, it is people who are in college as well as people who are teaching in college. Um, and they want to get the right skills for a great career. And uh, these could be in terms of um, learning the basic theory as well as learning Python, R, Ruby, and so on. On the uh, uh, next spectrum, uh, we see the developer's persona uh, who want to expand their technical skills with data science. And uh, the personas here that we are talking about are people who are really hands-on. They've already worked on um, several projects that could be addressing one or two uh, business requirements. And then they may be retooling themselves to adapt to data science, machine learning, and so on. And uh, these developer uh, personas, their um, approach is that uh, they would like to learn Python and uh, use uh, data sets that are available uh, to come up with machine learning models. And uh, they are looking for an environment where they can um, practice, right? And the data science uh, team, um, they are the ones who are like uh, deep dive engineers who want to get into the details of the data, understand the uh, relationship. And they typically um, resort to data science communities where they can uh, go ahead and learn more. But if you see what is common across all the personas um, and across people who are looking for getting started with machine learning, it's an environment to practice, right? They're all looking for an environment where they can get started, try to uh, uh, try to use um, some of the tools that are available today where uh, they can explore, where they can understand the data set, where they could uh, get to know the relationships of the data set and then um, get into the uh, details of understanding what would be the right approach. So the theoretical knowledge is all good, right? But you want to have an environment uh, without any knots um, where it's not uh, it's not really tough for you to get access into the environment. Just a open environment where you can just go and get started um, and train, right? We are not talking about productionalization. We are not talking about production environment here. We're just talking about an environment where you can get started uh, with machine learning, an environment where you can uh, learn machine learning and try to uh, get the first cut going. So with that said, um, what is that the data scientists need? 
right? Um, we, we'll just go through like bullet points, right? One is that um, they look for an environment which is like a Jupyter notebook, right? That's a kind of an environment that they want to practice. That's the environment that they're looking for to get started. Uh, it should be um, easy to get started. Um, not much of a hustle in terms of, uh, hey, reaching out to the IT administration teams, get access to it. So that, that could be like a next step in terms of taking something to production or productionalization, et cetera. But just to get started, but just to explore, just to learn a little more, uh, it needs to be an environment which is easy uh, to get started as well, right? So to address these two, SageMaker Studio Labs is a free, uh, no charge environment, no need to set up with your infrastructure. Uh, that is additional infrastructure that is required for cloud integrations and so on. And it is based on Jupyter Labs. Um, you need satisfactory compute. Um, so from uh, SageMaker Studio Labs side, uh, you get two types, uh, which we'll talk a little further. One is a CPU based, another one is a GPU based. For CPU, you get a, a T3X large instance. For GPU, you get a G4DX large instance. Time to code. Um, so uh, how do I uh, make sure that uh, I can pick up where I left off, right? So you can save your ML projects and you can pick up where you left off with uh, SageMaker Studio Labs. Uh, version control management is something that you look for when you want to and uh, when you want to get started in an environment. So SageMaker Studio Labs is uh, integrated with Git and you're looking for a support community and we have integration with um, GitHub. And then you're also looking for um, full uh, support of shell commands where you can have an interactive interface where you can uh, interact with the environment and we provide that through terminal access. So with with, with all of this put into the equation in terms of need to get started with machine learning and uh, how can I get access to an environment which is very easy to get started, we have SageMaker Studio Labs. So what is SageMaker Studio Lab? SageMaker Studio Lab is a Jupyter-based environment and uh, you can quickly get started by creating an account with an email address. And uh, most importantly, it is uh, a free account that you can create with no integration with cloud. If you want, you can still integrate with um, AWS environment. We'll talk about that. But there is no prerequisite or there is no need to um, set up any integration with AWS environment, no need to set up IAM, et cetera. It's a, it's a separate independent environment purely focused at uh, getting started with machine learning, experimentation, et cetera. And then you have 15 uh, GB uh, to save your works on the project. And as well as you have as many compute sessions as you need uh, for CPU, you get like 12 hours and GPU, you get about four hours. And you also get access to any notebook on GitHub and we'll give a, a repository link. And obviously you can also look through other repository links, but typically you can integrate with GitHub and get access to the notebook and start uh, your experimentation. And uh, what, what happens when you're done with this? Uh, there are options where you can migrate um, to SageMaker Studio. So we are talking about two environments, right? SageMaker Studio Labs, that is our core area of focus. That is what we're discussing today. And we also know about SageMaker SageMaker Studio, which is our uh, one-stop platform for all machine learning requirements. Studio Labs, just to differentiate so that we are on the same page, is that Studio Labs is an environment where you can get started, that's your independent environment, pretty much test cases, um, experimentation, and so on. Your SageMaker environment, where you also have Studio as an interface, is that the SageMaker is your uh, one-stop shop, uh, fully uh, packaged environment where you can do build, train, uh, deploy machine learning models uh, that is pretty much on the production side. Yep. So just wanted to outlay that uh, we have that differentiation. So with that said, I want to take a pause because we covered an overview and introduction to see if there are any questions. Hey, Raj, thanks. Uh, we do have uh, some questions uh, from Wobbins. Uh, how much experience with ML uh, should we have to build with SageMaker? Got it. So I will, um, I'll take uh, two different approaches, right? So that I'll give a complete uh, holistic response. So uh, SageMaker um, in general is your uh, platform to get started with machine learning, right? So uh, people with different uh, expertise level use SageMaker. Uh, like say, for example, 
someone uh, who doesn't have a very good understanding of uh, diving deep into the data, right? Let, let me call that people with about level 100 knowledge of data science, et cetera. They can use SageMaker Canvas um, that is pretty much targeted at uh, uh, business analysts, right? People who do not have a good understanding of machine learning, et cetera. They can get started with Canvas to quickly analyze the data and uh, get started with uh, building machine learning models all by point and click interface. That's one component. Right. So let's say you are a different persona where uh, you want to dive deep into the data. Right. So in that case, let's say that you don't have a good uh, understanding of pandas, numpy and other libraries. Right. So in that case, you can still use um, SageMaker Data Wrangler to carry out all your exploratory data analysis using point and click interface. So the, the two tools that I said so far, SageMaker Canvas and SageMaker Data Wrangler, does not require you to have much of an experience to get started with machine learning. However, let's say you want to get started with SageMaker and you have extensive knowledge on machine learning, then you can use uh, SageMaker platform, SageMaker Studio, where um, you could build your own machine learning model and explore the data, et cetera. So it all, to, to summarize, the answer is that it all depends on which phase are you in and you can use different components within SageMaker based on your expertise. So SageMaker is the overall platform, but within SageMaker, you have several features that may be applicable for you depending on your experience. So this, this part is just for SageMaker, right? But today what we are covering is all one component, which is called SageMaker Studio Labs. So to get started with SageMaker Studio Labs, you don't need to have any experience, ML experience per se. And the reason why I say that is because SageMaker Studio Labs is targeted at personas who wants to get started with machine learning, our ML enthusiasts, people uh, who may not uh, uh, be aware of some of the ML jargon, some of the ML terminologies, but rather they want to learn machine learning and so on. So uh, at whatever phase that you are in with regards to your uh, expertise, you can get started with SageMaker uh, Studio Labs. And that's the intent of this session. Yeah. Great. Thanks, Raj. Uh, we also have a, a comment from uh, Jenny Min, who wants to know if there's uh, any machine learning use cases in education technology that we could point them to. Sure. Um, we can share the link to uh, SageMaker Studio Labs and also in general SageMaker examples. And there are industry specific use cases you can try and um, pick and choose which uh, use cases that uh, might be applicable. To me, I would say uh, that could be a lot with regards to tabular use cases um, in education uh, where you could say, hey, um, here are the list of uh, students who enrolled for courses A, B, and C, right? Based on their personas, based on their um, skills, based on their marks, scoring patterns, grades, et cetera. And then maybe you can come up with a predictive model that would say, if there is a um, new student who is applying, will that student uh, be eligible for this particular course, right? I'm, I'm just picking up a random example, but those are some of the examples, like predicting if a student will be eligible to get into college X, Y, Z. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, Raj. That's uh, all the questions for the moment. Back to you. Awesome. Cool. So we spoke about uh, SageMaker uh, Studio Labs, right? So far, what we spoke about is SageMaker Studio Labs. And uh, let's talk about SageMaker, right? What you see on uh, the right side of your screen is SageMaker as a platform, right? Uh, SageMaker is um, your one-stop shop. If you want to prepare your uh, data, if you want to get started with your data, that's that that's where it starts, right? Typical uh, uh, data science or machine learning uh, use case starts with the data. So if you want to prepare your data, and then go into building a model, train and tune the model, and then deploy and manage. So that's the productionalization. The last piece that I'm talking about is the productionalization. So you could do end-to-end. -end. Again, um, this is not a mandate that you should be uh, doing all the phases. 
You can do end-to-end -end with SageMaker. Uh, but again, if you want to pick and choose some of the components alone to address a particular uh, requirement, uh, like say you want to identify um, bias and uh, uh, you want to make sure that uh, that is identified well before getting into the build phase and you could use SageMaker Clarify, all right? Or let's say we were talking about explorative data analysis. So let's say you want to get started, explore your data, you could use SageMaker Data Analysis. So you could uh, pick and choose the um, tools that you want to use for the specific need that uh, you are in, in terms of the ML adoption, or you could use the entire uh, portfolio of services within uh, SageMaker. Our recommendation is to use SageMaker as a whole for all your end-to-end -end needs. And, and there are some reasons for that. It's, it's because it's a fully integrated environment and it's a rich portfolio of services where you don't have to go into any other um, uh, source to fetch your data or maybe to do your data wrangling or to move your data to production or maybe during your model building phases and so on. So the SageMaker environment is the environment that you use as a one-stop shop. Now, in that context, that is all once you get started with machine learning, once you explore your data for each of your use cases and so on, right? On the flip side, on the left side, what you see is the independent environment that we are talking about today, the, the core area of uh, discussion today, SageMaker Studio Lab. So this is a no charge, no setup environment where you can get started with machine learning, where you can learn and experiment with ML, right? I just wanted to make sure that that um, uh, segregation is there so that because of the word SageMaker, we don't want to confuse between SageMaker in general versus SageMaker Studio Labs, yeah? So how does it work? Um, we will see that when we uh, get started. So uh, once you log in into SageMaker uh, Studio Lab uh, environment, not login, but basically when you access the URL, uh, you will be um, uh, requested to create or request an account. And once you request the account, um, you, you will get an email so that uh, you you know that uh, you are in the wait list. And then because you have the referral code today, you will quickly get access to uh, the Studio Labs environment. And we will share the referral link now in a few. And as soon as you get the referral link, I would request you to please go to the Studio Labs URL and request your account. You don't have to log in, but just request your account with the referral code so that you get priority access. So once that is done, um, after you, uh, you, you you create an account, you will be given a link so that you can create a sign-in username and password. And once you do that, um, then you can uh, get access to a CPU or GPU environment uh, that are listed here. And depending on which environment that you choose, you can then um, get access to uh, different environments like your GitHub, or you can have a command line uh, interface to interact uh, through terminal. And then once you're done uh, carrying out your model build, you could end the session. Uh, so that uh, you, you can come back and resume the session. And once this is all done, once, let's say, after a few months, you're done experimenting, you're comfortable, you may want to move this to SageMaker. We'll tell how you can migrate uh, this to SageMaker, and then you can start your uh, build process within SageMaker. That is like after you have learned if you want to take that further. So once you get into the project page, um, you can see the status of the project. You could also um, see what are the CPU, GPUs. We'll see that in the demo. And then you have some asserts to uh, get started in terms of uh, maybe getting into machine learning university, maybe some links to uh, different notebook instances or different notebooks that are available, um, or hugging face repository and popular blogs and so on. So this is how the notebook development environment uh, looks like. I will cover the components when we get into the demo. But just to summarize, uh, this is going to be a familiar uh, Jupyter Lab experience. If you've already worked on Jupyter Labs or SageMaker Studio, it is just going to be the same. Uh, you get terminal access um, uh, where you can interact. Uh, you have Git and GitHub integration. And uh, um, your ML environment on uh, AWS, this is going to run on AWS, even though you are not required to in integrate or access, but at the back end is running on AWS and your ML environment that you get, um, you get uh, compute dedicated to you. You get 12 hours of CPU and four hours of GPU. 
uh, within a 24 hours. So let's say if I say 12 hours, maybe you start uh, working on something and then you want to log out, you, you after two hours, you still have another 10 hours. So uh, you get unlimited uh, number of uh, CPU, GPU over a period of time, which means that it is not going to be cumulative. It's not going to be uh, accounted for every day the clock recycle. So every day you get uh, this amount of uh, hours for CPU and GPU, and you can use them um, as accordingly. You would not be able to share this with the others. Uh, this is specifically for you, the email address that you use to uh, request an account, and that will be tied to the email address. So it is for your use, and you could use um, your uh, environment. And then you also get a dedicated 15 GB for your project. You can install all the libraries that you want if there are some libraries that are not available. And uh, you can obviously pick up where you left out. Uh, like say you can log off and then you can come back and you'll still see the same uh, screen where you left off. And some customer testimonials before we get started. Um, I don't want to uh, read the entire thing, but uh, the beta customer quotes is that, um, hey, uh, AWS is working on democratizing uh, machine learning, right? So SageMaker Studio Lab is only going to help the cost because SageMaker Studio Labs is going to facilitate a lot more people to get access, yeah? Uh, you could read that um, for yourself, but uh, broadly some good uh, customer quotes in terms of uh, how SageMaker Studio Lab helps. And on the academic side, uh, this is what we have a couple of uh, quotes in terms of how SageMaker Studio Lab is uh, helping uh, students get started uh, without having a need for any of the configuration steps and so on. And we will show, share that uh, within the demo, like how easy is it to get started. Great. So uh, let's see if there are any questions before we get into the demo. Hey, Raj, thanks. Right now, uh, no questions up in chat. So I think we can dive right into the demo. Perfect. So um, I have recorded this demo uh, in advance. Um, I did this on my computer and recorded it so that we are not uh, waiting for the training to get started, et cetera. And uh, I'll, I'll give a walk through as we are going through each of these steps. Great, so this is the environment that we were talking about, uh, SageMaker Studio Labs. Um, you can go to the link uh, studiolab.sagemaker.aws and you have an option to sign in or request an account. Um, and uh, when you see the uh, primary page, um, th that could be, it could be slightly updated as of today, but broadly you can uh, sign in or request an account and uh, you have links uh, to watch a video um, if you are interested. And uh, as we uh, discussed earlier, uh, this is free and you get an option of compute on uh, CPU or GPU and you get uh, 15 GB of uh, storage. Um, and you can also uh, click on read the FAQs um, if you're interested there. You can browse projects and uh, uh, right at the bottom you have SageMaker Labs or the uh, SageMaker Stack Overflow for any questions on the labs on uh, GitHub uh, for the links. Um, let us go ahead and uh, request an account. Uh, this is how you request the account. Click on request account, enter your uh, details, as required, and that is where you enter your referral code, and then you click on uh, submit request. And please make sure that uh, you enter the referral code as is. It is case sensitive, uh, and please do it uh, in the next uh, fifteen minutes. Yeah, this step has to be completed in the next fifteen minutes. Let us now try to go and log in. Um, I click on sign in, enter my email. Um, this is all after you are approved for the account, right? Then you, once your account is created, you click on username, password, sign in. And as soon as you get in um, to your uh, home screen, uh, you're presented with a simple interface that says, hey, what is your runtime and what type of compute that you can um, select either CPU, GPU. Let us select CPU and uh, get started. Uh, let's initiate it. And as it is coming up, let's explore the other components. You could open up, uh, dive into deep learning. We'll share the links there. And you can also uh, go to machine learning university. There are some notebooks which I'll show shortly. Um, and uh, the link to hugging face notebooks, if you are interested with uh, the transformers and um, hugging face uh, is the home of transformers um, the 
the libraries and the state of the art uh, natural language processing uh, speech and computer vision so if you are interested uh, please do use that link we will share the link to hugging face repo as well now let us open up one of the links uh, we'll not go through all the links but let us open open mlu notebooks so let's see um, how it looks. So if you go into the uh, MLU uh, section, you have natural language processing, um, you have tabular data, you have computer vision and decision tree and ensemble methods. And for each of these uh, sections, you also have a GitHub link where you can go and uh, explore uh, the data. Now, let us go back to SageMaker uh, Studio Lab, and uh, we have the environment up and running, and we are going to click on Open Project, and uh, that opens up the uh, Jupyter Lab environment. And if, you, as I said earlier, if you already used uh, SageMaker Studio uh, Jupyter Labs, this environment is going to look very familiar. Um, and this is the interface. As soon as you open, you will see a launcher uh, screen. Um, where you will have the notebooks, console, and the terminal that you can, these are all different blocks that you can interface. Um, and then on the left side, what you see is the uh, folder uh, view. And uh, you also have an option to click on simple view versus normal view. You also have a, a reminding runtime that show up right at the bottom. Now let us go on the left side. First, you have folder view, then you have running terminals and kernels. If you click on that, then the GitHub links, table of contents, and the extension manager. On the top, you can click on new launcher. If you want to create a new folder, if you want to upload files, refresh the browser, and the Git clone that is required. So um, let us, as, as, as since we logged in, let us go to the terminal and see what resources we have. First, let us see on the memory side. And uh, we have like about 15 uh, gigs as we discussed earlier. Um, so you, you, that, that is available for you. And one request is that if you are adding up more, then you can remove the files and then you could get started again. Uh, cleanup is the best way to go. And let us see the uh, compute aspects in terms of uh, vCPUs um, that you get. For the CPU uh, instance, uh, I think it's about four vCPUs that you see on Sibling, yeah. So that gives you the overview in terms of what compute infrastructure that you've got um, after you launch the uh, compute instance. Great, now this gives an overview, right? So let us quickly get back um, and uh, see uh, how you can get started. First, uh, let us go ahead and do a clone. Uh, let's do a git clone. And for that, um, let me uh, initiate. Yeah, this is the GitHub repo that we will be using today, the Studio Labs. You would already have a link uh, to Studio Labs. And we're gonna take that link and uh, we're going to do a clone. Uh, either you could do a git clone or you could just click on that icon and then give the URL there and click on clone. It starts to clone uh, the repo in here. And today we are going to use a natural language processing use case. But however, uh, before we get into that, here are the uh, list of folders. First, let me talk about how do you go and create a conda environment? That is not required, but I'll just show you how you create a conda environment. Um, and kind of environment are like uh, independent environments so that you can have different versions of files so that you don't uh, have cross uh, issues. Um, so we have one YAML file under computer vision, KMNIST. And to do a Conda install, you do a create uh, Conda environment and then activate the Conda environment. Um, and in our case, it's a, a computer vision uh, use case. And uh, here are the list of uh, dependencies that you would install. Just right click and click on build Conda environment. In our case, it is just going to say that you already have an environment running because I already created one previously. Um, so, but that is how you create a Conda environment and then activate it. Now, let us go back to our use case. The use case for discussion today um, is uh, going to be NLP, natural language processing. And uh, this is a hugging face model. It's a pre-trained model. So you go into natural language processing and then um, click on uh, the disaster recovery translation. And here you select which uh, kernel that you want to use. We are going to use a default Python kernel. Uh, you select that. 
And these are the different environments that we spoke about. And we are going to fine tune uh, the T5 model locally. Um, and after you select the kernel, um, yeah, and this is for COVID-19 health service announcements with Hugging Face. So this is a pre-trained model, meaning it is already trained, and we are just going to fine tune that locally. And this is just a sample use case. It is not that you have to use it only for this, but we just wanted to give you a walkthrough of a sample use case to see how it works. So here is the data set um, on uh, Tico 19. Uh, so uh, there is a link that uh, we have provided, as well as when you get into the GitHub uh, repo, you will see that link. And if you're interested, you can um, explore the data set uh, further. So, but this is where we get the data. Now, as the uh, um, as we indicated earlier, uh, we're going to run this on uh, CPU uh, instance. You could run it on a GPU as well, but uh, just for demonstration, I'm going to do that on a CPU to begin with. First, you are writing the requirements. So these are the requirements that needs to be um, installed. And as soon as you do that, you see the requirement.txt file gets populated. Uh, these are the libraries that we need uh, for us to proceed. And I'm going to do a pip install of all these libraries. That's like uh, Torch, Dataset, Evaluate, and so on. And uh, once you uh, see that, it is going to take some time um, to install all the um, Git clones and uh, once the um, libraries and the whatever that we mentioned within the requirements are completed i did a install previously so it says most of the requirements are satisfied but if you're doing it for the first time um, you could do that and then you can import ipython and whenever it says you got to restart you can restart the kernel and uh, this is where I'm going to point the uh, data to. So that, that is the link to the zip file. I'm just going to point that to path of my data. And then I'm uh, doing a wget or downloading that data locally. Um, and uh, you, you will see that file uh, saved on the left side. Yeah, uh, the zip file. As soon as you download it, that should show up on the left side. All the activities that you are doing, you could interactively see within the Jupyter. It's, it's a typical Jupyter lab environment. And then I'm going to print that file. Uh, I'm going to do a split of uh, my data. And uh, you see the zip file and then the TMX file. The data is all in TMX file. So this is a language translation use case that we were talking about, English to Spanish on NLP. And uh, uh, I'm going to do an unzip of the same. And you see the unzipped uh, TMX file. And after that, um, as we indicated about the English to Spanish, I'm going to say that the source code is English and the target code is Spanish. So that is the translation that we are talking about. Um, and once uh, that is completed, um, we're going to take the local TMX file and codes and basically go through if there is a regex max match. That is the uh, code. And it's just doing a validation of the source and target uh, to identify the uh, regex uh, match. And uh, once uh, that is completed, the next step is going to be uh, just get the actual pairs between the source and uh, target. Uh, we do a pandas import, um, and then uh, we're going to uh, see the uh, respective columns. Like each of those English uh, sentences has the appropriate uh, Spanish uh, labeling, if you will, right? So that's the labeled data that we're talking about. And then we do a, a DF to CSV um, to uh, parse the data. And then the next step uh, is to format the extracted data uh, for a hugging face model because this model expects the data to be in a certain format, which is JSON lines format. So because it is in TMX, we are converting that to JSON lines. Um, and uh, th this is the type. So previously it, it is like two columns and now we are going to move that to JSON line format so that it's easily readable uh, by the model. And uh, once we uh, do that, we'll again do a print of uh, the source and translation. So this is the format that we are talking about. So we have converted that into the format that is accepted by uh, this model. And uh, once you go into the data folder, you will be able to see the train.json. That, that is the data that we just now uh, converted. And then you do a, a wget of a, a Python a script run underscore translation dot Python. That's coming from that link. Um, and 
you, you'll see that downloaded on your folder. And uh, once that is downloaded, we are just going to um, run the uh, translation.py. And this is the step that is going to take a while. And after I initiate this, um, I'm just going to uh, go back and uh, uh, show some of the ways that you can integrate with AWS. I'm just going to take a, a pause in here. We will come back to it. I already ran another um, model with the GPU, and I'll show you the last few steps in a few. Now, we'll just drop this here. Uh, it is going to take some time, and even when you are doing, it is going to take a while. And the next steps are just that after this model is uh, fine-tuned, you're just going to test your newly fine-tuned model um, if that is, uh, uh, if that is uh, performing as expected. So we are going to give an input sequence and see what the output is uh, based on the model that we train locally. We'll come back to this. Um, uh, and, and you could continue doing this um, when you're doing it later. Uh, but for now, let me show an important thing, because sometimes you may want to go and integrate with uh, AWS environment, right? So far, whatever that we spoke here, this has no integration. This is a separate independent environment. What if, if you want to connect with your AWS environment? That is possible through AWS CLI. So you go to connect to AWS um, folder. And uh, you have a notebook there, access AWS from Studio Labs. Uh, open the notebook, and uh, we're going to install uh, Boto and uh, AWS CLI, and that is how you establish the connection. So once you uh, complete uh, the CLI install, then you can pass your credential. One word of caution, uh, please do not commit this to GitHub, because if, if you use your access key and secret key here, after you do the connection, delete it uh, from the notebook, um, just in case if you are committing it. So for now, you could use the credentials to establish the connection. But after you establish the connection, you can delete. This is a typical way how you can establish connection even from your local computer through AWS CLI. It's pretty much the same way. Since you have access to terminal, you could do it that way as well. Um, and then after that, you install uh, pip install SageMaker. And then you import the role. And once you have the role, once you have the role configured uh, to have access to other resources, then um, you could do anything that you want in terms of accessing different components of AWS, like uh, connecting to um, an S3 bucket or initiating a SageMaker um, uh, model. Uh, you can initiate a SageMaker training um, uh, where you say, this is my instance type, this is my instance count, and so on. And you can start your training. Great. So that's uh, pretty much with regards to uh, the demo I wanted to show. I'll definitely come back to um, one uh, last section that we wanted to showcase on GPU. But before that, uh, before I load up uh, that demo, I just wanted to see if there are any questions. Uh, thanks, Raj. Uh, no questions at this time uh, in the chat about it. Awesome. So let me share my screen. Great. So uh, this is where we left off uh, previously, right? Uh, before we went into connecting to AWS, uh, we started training a model on uh, CPU, and then we wanted to go and test the model, right? So this is how uh, we test the model. So I ran the same example on a GPU instance just to fasten um, the training. And uh, in, in, in that, where I initiated the training, now the training is uh, completed. And the next step is this is where we, 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 we previously left off, the output place. So I'm just trying to do a LS of what all I see under output. And uh, then I'm initiating uh, the newly fine-tuned model. Um, and I'm going to do an evaluation of the model. And to do that, um, I'm just initiating um, the evaluation in here. And these are all the T5 blocks that you see. And uh, here is the um, input sequence that we are going to um, share. And again, just a quick note that I wanted to share is that this is not going to be a state-of-the-art uh, training because uh, if you go to the top, uh, if you see the epochs, uh, we indicated just three epochs, right? That's what 
uh, it's saying in here. Uh, but if you want to have a state of the art, then you need to have a little more epochs. But since this is demonstration, we just wanted to run it with few epochs and see how this uh, model performs as a whole. And uh, we're going to give the input uh, sequences in here. And uh, here, here are the English um, verbiage or the English sentences. And uh, as you see in the bottom, um, this is all the English to Spanish. It's in the same format in which we train the model. So whatever English sentences that we gave on with regards to phrases on the COVID-19 uh, data set, uh, these are the symptoms, basically symptoms or um, the language that we use, like I have cough too, or how high has your fever been? And the intent is that is the source of uh, English language, which we wanted to translate uh, through the NLP model to uh, Spanish. And this is the output that we are getting uh, for each of those um, sample uh, data that we provided just to test and see how the model is uh, performing. And uh, once we do that, once we are comfortable um, that, uh, hey, the model is performing as it is required, you could go ahead and uh, save the pre-trained model. In this case, it is my TF English to Spanish. That's the name that we give. And then you could also do a tar of that particular model. And uh, with that, your model is uh, ready and available. Of course, we did not get into too much of details, but the intent here is to showcase how you can uh, quickly get started with uh, experimenting and learning machine learning with SageMaker Studio Labs. And uh, we just took a sample example of uh, running a natural language processing model, uh, which is pre-trained already. Yeah, you, you are not initiating the training, but it's a pre-trained model. And we train that locally. Um, and we do not use any of the uh, cloud resources. In our case, we just uh, did it on the local uh, node that we have, uh, the CPU. You um, know that we have. You could use CPU or GPU, depending on how much time you have. But most use cases to just get started, I think uh, CPU should satisfy the requirements that you have in terms of compute. Um, and uh, once you uh, get started, you could uh, use some of the uh, code that you typically use in any Jupyter Lab environment. And uh, instead of uh, doing it on a separate environment, here is your uh, free environment uh, that is running on AWS, but you don't have to configure anything and uh, when I say anything, no configuration with regards to integration to AWS or connecting to any of the data sources, etc. You can plug and play, you can bring in your data sources, uh, download them um, into SageMaker Studio Labs, explore the data, and then once you're done, one common question that we normally get is that, hey, how, how can I um, share this with uh, someone? Um, uh, the way is that once you train the model, you could follow the same steps like uh, getting the model exported to um, S3 bucket and then sharing it with others. Or if you are done with all your exploration, if you're done with your uh, training aspects, if you're done with your learning, uh, then you may want to move into uh, SageMaker. There is, uh, if you go into FAQs, uh, there is also some details around how you can take this and uh, run within SageMaker Studio. Like, so far, what we are talking about is Studio Lab. So what if you're done with this and then you want to productionalize the model or probably you want to take it uh, into a uh, into a full-blown environment where you want to do all the model training, et cetera, within the integrated environment. So this is this is your initial stop, if you will, or, pit uh, or, or, or a place where you come in to get started. And once you're done with this, then you move into the next environment. Great. So let's get back to the recap and uh, highlights before we wrap up. Uh, SageMaker Studio Lab, you have the link and you have referral codes for priority access. Please uh, complete that. You have another maybe five minutes. After that, the referral code will not work. Um, the referral code will work only till 3 p.m. Eastern today. So please, if you haven't uh, uh, initiated a request an account, please do so, and you will have uh, priority access uh, given if you use the referral code that we shared today. And one account means uh, one user session at a time and as many times that you want. And uh, one user session is like about 12 hours max for CPU and about four hours max for GPU. And uh, you get unlimited CPU, eight hours total GPU per day, and you can leave the training jobs running as is. And then finally, uh, with regards to Jupyter Labs environment, it is pretty open. So you can install your own libraries and you get at least 15 GB uh, to save your project. Great. So, Steve, 
that's all I had today for content. Hope it's uh, useful for everyone who joined. Thanks, Raj. Uh, appreciate it. Great topic today. Uh, really enjoyed it. Uh, in closing today, we we looked at understanding the SageMaker landscape and getting started with Amazon SageMaker Studio Lab and machine learning. Uh, if there's any questions that we're not answered today, you can post your questions on repost.aws where one of our experts can provide you with an answer or your question could become a topic of a future show. If you have feedback, please check the chat box uh, on the right for a link to our survey, or you can email us at AWS supports you at amazon.com. We want to hear from you. Tell us what you uh, would like to see on the show. Uh, for those who may be watching us in the India time zone, please join us Wednesday, October 12th at 10 a.m. Uh, IST, where our experts will be discussing using AWS Cloud Shell and ESM to delete your Lambda functions. Uh, and otherwise, thanks for joining uh, AWS Supports You and happy cloud computing. Thanks, Raj. Thank you.